Well, it's been a little while since I've done one, so I figured it was time to bring back the Q&A video series. I'm not going to be doing it all the time. I'm sure some of you might like to see me do them with the same frequency and veracity with which I twitch one or both of my eyes, but that's just not going to happen. Sorry. You get them every once in a while, and I'm looking for content, looking for something different to do, um, but how often that will come, and eh, stay tuned. Not going to be that often, though, because sometimes the questions tend to be a little bit repetitive. Um, that's just the way it is. But let's go ahead and see what we've got here. I want to try and make wrestling fun again in 2017 because we need a significant dose of that. And hopefully these questions make this Q&A fun. Well, sometimes you guys fail to live up to those expectations, but we're going to find out. Joel Statham, 91. Don't you think Cena would be better used at WrestleMania in a handicap match versus Brad Maddox, Honey Boo Boo, and Mama June? Hashtag Honey Beef Mode. I'm glad to see people still remember Honey Beef Mode. I'm, I'm glad. I'm very, very glad. Honey Boo Boo was a saint, damn it, a saint. How dare people remember? Wonderful family. Wonderful. And Honey Beef Mode at WrestleMania would still make me pop. Yes, it's true. Mason Clark. What was your opinion of Saturday night's main event and should WWE bring it back? At this point in time, anything that involves adding a wrestling show is an absolute hell no. Do I miss Saturday night's main event and I wish in a different time and place that the WWE would bring it back? Absolutely. But not in today's world. I already don't care enough about the product as it is. I don't need yet another show that I'm not going to fucking watch. And if you got to spend the day with Psycho Sid or Scott Steiner, who would you pick and why? Hmm. I could go clang and bang with Scott Steiner at the gym and then do math problems all night. Or I could work off jumping off the second rope and then go play softball afterwards with Psycho Sid. I mean, you're, you're asking me to make an almost impossible choice here. So I will punt. I will pass. All right. So the Owens, every time I ask a question that never gets answered, number one, that's bullshit. And you goddamn good and well know it. So I remember specifically having said your name before in multiple Q&A videos. And I'm sure if you go back and watch, you'll actually see that to be true. So I expect the Schleg Daddy apology to be in the comment section below. Number two, you didn't actually ask a fucking question here, so therefore, as a result, I couldn't answer the question that you didn't fucking ask. Come on, people. Oh, Mason Clark, again, more Psycho Sid and Steiner, which is just fine with me. Finish this second sentence. Psycho Sid and Scott Steiner walk into a bar. Well, Psycho Sid breaks a lot of bar stool legs. Scott Steiner regales everybody in newfangled math that makes Common Core standards stand on its head, and then a lot of women get pregnant, and we play softball afterwards. That's exactly what the fuck happens. Okay, Noja, Nokaj, who do you think Charles Oakley is going to smack first, Phil Jackson or James Dolan? Uh, hopefully James Dolan. Just dumb. Just dumb on so many different levels. James Dolan is a fucking moron. What a tool. Just what a tool. And who would pop a boner first? Randy Orton or the Iron Sheik? Now, is this in the ring or in general? You know, because a lot of people sleep on the Iron Sheik's uh, uh, crooked stick ability. I mean, he was known for popping some raging ring boners. But Randall Keith Orton, man, that is... The majesty of the ring boner. I mean, nobody pops one more consistently and frequently and impressively than Randall Keith Orton. And you don't, if you don't get why that's okay for us men to talk about this in 2017, after six plus years of doing this shit on YouTube, then go back and watch some of the glory of the ring boner from the past. Now watch some of the old videos and you'll understand. Chairman 015. Would Reigns going over Taker at WrestleMania help Reigns or sabotage him even further? I, I honestly don't know how it helps him. Because if you're going to still can try and 
try and continue to have them be the, oh, we'll spin it by we're in the reaction business, so we don't care if you boom, you're still reacting, but we really want you to worship this guy as the top face. Beating Taker certainly isn't going to get you there. And if he beats Taker at WrestleMania, and you actually try to turn him heel, which would be the only real logical course of action at that point in time, if he won, then is he going to get the fuck-off heat, as opposed to the money-drawing type? Are people going to pay money to see Roman Reigns get his ass kicked because they're pissed that he beat The Undertaker? Or are they just going to get even more pissed because now Taker has lost at WrestleMania again, and this time it was to Roman Reigns, and they just say, fuck this shit, period, and fuck off Roman Reigns, and fuck off Hunter and Vince McMahon. There's a lot of risk involved with doing that match. A lot of risk. Uh, Swag Pizza 27. Uh, who gets the least poon? Andrew Luck or Sami Zayn? <laughs> Why you got to bust on Andrew Luck? He's an NFL starting quarterback making over $20 million per year. There's a great parody Twitter account of him referencing him as a Civil War general. And he uses a flip phone. And you're comparing him to the fucking Uber driver. You know, that's one thing that's interesting, just, just in general. And this is not just to bust out Sami Zayn. Uh, now, granted, you know, some of the guys like Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens are married. But there's plenty of these guys in WWE currently in wrestling, period, that you don't hear about them having wives, let alone girlfriends. Makes you wonder if, you know, the Pat Patterson influence is there and the boys are playing with the boys maybe more than they ever have. I don't know. Oh, but Sami Zayn gets far less pooning than Andrew Luck does. Uh, Blitz team, greatest in-ring performer of this generation. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> the, the right question should be, biggest star of this era? Nobody. Biggest money draw of this era? Fucking nobody. We've graduated to this point where we talk about in-ring performances, and this shit doesn't draw money. I don't give a fuck how much anybody comes on here or in other versions of the internet and tries to pump this up that is about the in-ring performance. You've taken now what for historically many, many years has been the least important part, at least of WWE's version of professional wrestling sports entertainment, the actual in-ring action, and made it the predominant driving force in the business today. That's why people don't give a shit. They turn on the TV and they look at some of these dudes and they say, this is what wrestling's fucking become? I'm supposed to like or hate these lame fucks? The fuck happened? And I promise you, if you watch wrestling with people that haven't watched in a while and they turn it on, they're going to sit there and their first reaction is, who the fuck is that? Question number two is, why the fuck did this get like this? Number three, why the fuck would I watch this again? Greatest in-ring performer in this generation. Frankly, how the fuck could you tell the difference? Because everybody wrestles the same. Everybody does similar types of flips and kicks. You know, you'll watch a, a show, whether it be a Raw or a SmackDown or a pay-per-view, and you'll see how many guys go through the middle rope out of the ring or go over the top rope. There should be one guy, maybe two, that does that per show, period. And everybody fucking does it. That's dumb. It shouldn't be a standard move like a wrist lock or a right hand. And it's become that. It's ridiculous. Uh, David Henry, what's the best route for God to have a son at this point? Um, borrow Shawn Michaels semen? That's a, probably his best option. Maybe uh, more closely associate himself with the click because Scott Hall and Kevin Nash can make sons. Maybe he will want to make a son if he gets in line with them. Uh, greatness. Deluxeman or Chase Oliver? Who do you like more? Um, It's kind of unfair because... No, it's not. Chase Oliver, and I'll tell you why. Because there's a certain Bullwinkle-esque type of quality. Like, you guys shouldn't pick on Randall Keith Orton. He is the greatest performer in WWE today. Just because he doesn't talk on the microphone doesn't mean he can't, even though that's not really the strength of his game. We are all about the pose, the sleeve tattoos, the construction worker beard, the baby oil, the raging ring boner, and of course, the RKO. You know, Deluxe Men kind of vacillates back and forth between moments of, you know, liking the dude and then 
other moments where it's kind of unbearable and <laughs> intolerable. <laughs> like he's having Twitter, his Twitter followers tweet that puss Sami Zayn because, hey, I want you to unblock me so I can follow you, and then I'm going to create a new Twitter account for one sole purpose, and that is so that way I can follow Sami Zayn again because I love him so bad. Ah, oh, fuck him. Find somebody else to fucking follow. I, I give Alex a lot of shit, and I know a lot of people give a lot of shit, but I, I like Alex. I, I've always gotten along with him over the years, even though I haven't agreed with him a lot. And usually in the grand scheme of things, I come out on the right side of things a lot, even if he won't necessarily want to admit it. He knows it's true, and a lot of you do too. So I don't have a problem with either one of them. Neil Long or Gabrielle Union? Oh, while Gabrielle Union is married to Dwayne Wade currently, we all know deep, deep down, or at least I do, that she loves and craves that white dick, period. With that said, Gabrielle Union strikes me more of the type of girl that I'd put it in her dirty mouth hole, or I'd have to put it in her butt out of principle and discipline, not because I not because I wanted to, but because I had to. It was like an obligation. But Nia Long just strikes me as a type that I would just want to continuously pump babies in. I mean, just majestic creature. And I mean that in the most flattering way possible. I would prefer Nia Long. Another wrong with Gabrielle Union, I just would prefer Nia Long. They're both surely better than Beyonce's overrated ass. You want to talk about a bed of puss that stinks to high hell? Beyonce's. Boom, I said it. I'd rather do Kelly Rowland. Uh, Matt Meffey 2. When is the Breakfast Club merchandise coming? The people demand it. Do they? You're literally the only person that has ever referenced <laughs> Breakfast Club shit. I'm sure there are certain copyright infringements there. If I sit there and use the Breakfast Club name or uh, use the likenesses of guys like Triple H and Batista and Cena and Orton and Sheamus. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. If the Dream WrestleMania main event doesn't happen, who should be fired? Every YouTube wrestling personality that doesn't endorse it. And then major heads at the top of WWE. Heads have to roll. They need to roll. They would deserve to roll. Who's better, The Rock or HBK? The Rock, period. Who's the bigger threat to daughters worldwide? This comes from Nav the Poet. The previous question came from Malik Donnelly. Uh, Nav the Poet asks, who's the bigger threat to daughters worldwide, Ric Flair or Jerry Lawler? Um, I think Jerry Lawler has to be because his tendency is, you know, 14 to 24. He don't give a fuck. He'll fuck them all. <laughs> um, Grossbeck Alex, if you had to replace any current wrestler's legs with Psycho Sid's legs, who would you choose? You just don't do that. There's only one Psycho Sid, and nobody would be worthy of Psycho Sid's legs. Uh, let's see here. Up Rouge, you Rouge, I hope I said that right. Would you rather get motorboated for the rest of 2017 by House of Kong or be forced to watch Dolph Ziggler matches forever? Number one, we don't use that name. That's a curse word in the OTR Central world. Number, uh, But at least he doesn't block people on Twitter like the punk bitch that some of the other guys in WWE are. Um... When you say get motorboated, what's she going to do? She's going to motorboat my tits? She's going to motorboat my balls? she start trying to motorboat my ass crack. That's when we got a problem. Um, if I got to motorboat her, then the answer is very simple. If she wants to motorboat some dude's butt, then she could do it to, who's their husband, Josh Matthews? Uh, you know, us white boys, we are some freaky fuckers. But the schleg daddy draws the line. I'll pound that puss and I'll lick that puss to kingdom fucking come. Other things too, but you start getting near my sphincter, that's when we say game's off. Period. Especially you start coming at me, you start sucking off, and you try to stick that thumb up there, you're about to get that dragon, angry dragon, bitch. <laughs> that donkey punch. Uh, <laughs> uh, the real Pietro 35, how would you have booked Hulk's uh, title run in 91 since so many people were unhappy with WrestleMania 8's lineup? At the end of the day, while the 92 Royal Rumble is a classic and arguably the best of all time, it sucks because it didn't lead to Hogan versus Flair at WrestleMania 8. At the end of the day, everything about that company in 91, especially once Flair came into the fold, should have been at Ho about Hogan versus Flair at WrestleMania 8 in 1992. Now, give a shit all the stupid spin you've gotten from WWE over the years why that match hasn't happened. That's just revisionist bullshit trying to justify and excuse the stupidity of not doing Hogan versus Flair in 1992, period. 
A hug life for life, which is better, suplex city or hugplex city. Neither one of them fucking things. They're both fucking lame. Bailey's hugging gimmick makes her a heel in my eyes because why do we want to heal it the fuck out at this point? I'll look at it this way. Got all these fucking whiny Democrats and liberals and progressives. I don't want to fucking hug them. I most certainly don't want to fucking hug Trump supporters, the conservatives, and the whack jobs on the alt right. Are you fucking kidding me? Why would I want to hug them? And the one side talks about how the other side is whining and complaining when it's actually this other side that's every bit is whining and complaining. We're going to boycott this, but we can't spell Budweiser white. Right, stupid fucks. Uh, so that's stupid. And Suplex City. Oh, if anybody else does it, it'd be dumb, but Brock Lesnar does it, and it's awesome. He walks around for 15 minutes, does the same fucking suplex. We'll boo Scott Steiner out of the building if he does it, but he actually does a fucking Frankensteiner off the top. What does Brock Lesnar do? Oh, big, dumb, stupid, blockhead, meat salesman. Ah, fuck both of them. That's what they can do. So neither one of them is better than both. Fuck off. Sam T., <clears throat> who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, and then, what did you think about the Super Bowl? Was it a was it bullshit or was it off the chain? It was the craziest Super Bowl I've ever seen. Well, certainly not the best. I think it once and for all cemented the leg legacy of Bill Belichick as being the best head coach in NFL history. When you look at his team's consistent uh, dominance um, for the past 15 years in the era that he's had to coach in, and frankly, sometimes the lack of talent that he's actually had in terms of big household names. I also think it cemented Tom Brady's place as the greatest quarterback of all time. If he wasn't already, which I thought he was, it clearly has to now. I'm, I'm just sorry. And to sit there and say that somebody is better than Tom Brady at the quarterback position in the annals of NFL history, I think is just delusional. Bullshit. Revisionist bullshit. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Dude's got more rings than anybody. His numbers measure up to just about anybody. And when you look at his level of dominance for the consistent period of time, without the big weapons over the years that guys like Peyton Manning had and Joe Montana had, you know, it's got to be Brady at this point in time. Just accept it and move on with life. Joel Statham 91, will we get a honey beef mode run in at WrestleMania? Oh, if there is a god. Honey Boo Boo is a saint. Handsome Halley, if Kevin jo Owens hit the gym in the sunbeds, could he be the next member of the Breakfast Club? That dumb son of a bitch pussy would be more likely to eat the gym than hit it. And in terms of sunbeds, he'd need to take a bath in the sun. And no, he still wouldn't be allowed in the breakfast club. 1983, Jason, do you think Eva Maria being involved with a talent agency like WME is or was affecting her WWE career? Um, I didn't know she had a career to begin with, number one. Number two, it's part of the flaw of WWE now. They try to make everybody a freaking in-ring performer. Not everybody's destined to be that, male or female. Some of the guys are destined to be interviewers and ring announcers and commentators and managers and so on. Not everybody needs to be an in-ring performer. It's better if they're not. Same thing with the women. You got to have some fucking eye candy, some valets. Not everybody should be a woman's wrestler. And Eva Marie is one of those types. You could use her as a heater to really actually get some legitimate heel reactions for some guys. And, of course, the WWE screws the gooch on that, too. Dylan Schwartz, if Cena proposes to Nikki at WrestleMania, should she say no just to fuck with him and everyone? No, what she should say is yes and no. Oh, by the way, John, I'm pregnant. It's yours, and it's a daughter. You want to talk about some Jerry Springer, Maury Povich, WrestleMania classic all-time bullshit right there? That would be it. After the main event of WrestleMania, Cena versus Orton, he finds out that he's going to be a dad, and it's going to be a daughter. Oh, the life of the breakfast club. Uh, Declan McLaughlin, what's the smallest? The smartest chance of losing his virginity, the chance that God will lose at WrestleMania, or the current ratings? Uh, it's probably likely God will lose to Rollins at WrestleMania. Also, in terms of the smartest chances of losing their virginity, frankly, a lot of them have. You can pay for pussy. <laughs> Some of them have sex with other men, probably. Um, then, you know, there are many others that have girlfriends, that have wives. Believe it or not, it's a bad stereotype. It's a stereotype that wrestling fans have merited based off of their actions and appearance over the years. Uh, on top of that, uh, wrestling fans being too too much of a pussy group to be able to effectively fight back and stand up against the stupidity of the stereotypes of professional wrestling. 
Uh, you want to talk about things looking gay. That's the thing a lot of people say about wrestling, especially the UFC fucks that try to forget that they used to be wrestling fans. I mean, you're talking about UFC where the whole name of the game is to get on top of your opponent and mount him where it's basically dick-to-dick -dick or dick-to-ass contact. Oh, but professional wrestling is homo, right? Right? Get the fuck out of here. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm sure there's plenty of smarks that have had sex with a woman with their penis. The quality of the woman? Mm, you know, linebackers lead loving too. Side note, gentlemen. If you like some big girls, slap some A1 steak sauce on your dick, and that girl will suck that bone dry like it's a T-bone. Promise ya. Duke THS closes us out. Should Sami Zayn incorporate the Uber driver and Pineapple Express into his offensive repertoire? I've never seen the Pineapple Express, so I can comment on that. You may now mock me if you would like in the comments section. But as far as the Uber driver... Anything involving being the Uber, dri Uber driver at this point in time would be infinitely more entertaining than that bland-ass uh, pale pussy. I mean, what about Sami Zayn is interesting? The answer is fucking nothing. So even even like the halluva kick, it's just fucking dumb play on words. You know, just you could incorporate uh, taxi slang into it. You could call his finisher the fair breaker or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anything that would involve giving the fucking lame ass a personality or a shtick of some kind would be a welcome change to me. Because God knows he fucking needs it. Although not according to a lot of these fucking nerds. <laughs> He's great. He's got the meat seat to win the Royal Rumble. That's the state of fucking professional wrestling today. We went from Hulk Hogan, the Macho Man, to Austin and The Rock, to frankly, Hunter and HBK, to Cena and Orton, to fucking Sami Zayn. Oh my god. Thanks for your questions, guys. This wasn't as fun as it needed to be or should have been, so we'll try again next time. But I still find myself mildly amused by the questions.